What's going on guys? Thanks for checking out the Booth Talk channel. I'm Jeremy and today we're going to be talking about how to paint a mixer. Yes, you heard me right. This is Booth Talk and we've always dealt with automotive stuff, but we're going to change it up. We're going to have some fun. We're going to be talking about how to paint a KitchenAid mixer. Uh, now, I, the reason we're doing this video is because I started doing these probably about six months or so ago just for presents for friends and family and stuff like that, folks that wanted them painted. And the response on them through social media has actually been really awesome. Now, I've gotten a lot of questions asking about how I do them, what kind of prep work is involved, what kind of paint do I use, this and that. And we're, and we're going to address all of that. Now, this one in particular belongs to my sister-in-law, so I figured why not go ahead and do a video. This one is going to go Metal Flake uh, from Tropical Glitz, and then we're also going to use a purple candy concentrate from Sim, uh, Sim Products as well. So we're going to break it down, we're going to show you the process, and we're going to go at it. So let's have some fun. Let's paint a mixer, guys. All right, everybody, so right here, what we're doing is I'm going to go ahead and just give you a heads up. I'm going to speed up some of this footage. I'm going to slow it down because we don't have the time to go through and actually show you every single thing. So I want to show you taking the base off. And the main thing right here is get this shot right here of taking out the mechanism that is uh, made for the bowl lift itself. Now, you don't have to take the, the base of it off, but it definitely does help being able to do it. You'll see here in a second, I'll put the base back on so I can actually work on taking the mixer apart. Now here what we're doing is we're taking apart the electronics, the motherboard here. This is very important to understand that you need to take pictures, you need to go through and actually make note of where everything plugs up and how everything plugs up. This will be important. I'll touch back on it whenever we're doing reassembly. Alright, so here we're going to go ahead and we're starting to take apart the, uh, the bolts that are holding the motor in as well as the gears up on the front half of it. So the important part here, you see me putting down the towel, that's for this very front part right here. This is where the gears are. You don't want to rock this thing and tilt it and all. You want to go nice and easy, straight up until you get it off, and then turn it over. There's still a gear inside, that's where all your grease is. You don't want it going everywhere. But you cannot access the motor and take the motor out until you actually take that front half of it out. So it's easier to take both of those off. Now you have access to the, uh, to the screws that are holding the, the top part of the mixer onto the neck itself of the body. So that coming off, now's a great time to go ahead, undo your the rest of your connections, the electrical cord, pull that on out of the way. Now, here we're gonna go in and we're gonna actually go and attach the, the gear cover or head, whatever you wanna call it, back on top because you wanna to try to keep that sealed up as much as you can. Now after this, what you don't see is actually while it's being painted, I have that entire assembly actually wrapped up and then taped up from there. So. A little bit of double protection, trying to make sure everything's good. Now the lift assembly here, it's one screw and then the entire thing comes out. I highly recommend putting it back together and setting it to the side. You, you don't want to sit there and fight that thing. Now this here, for anybody who's not in the automotive field, that is just called a clip tool. That thing does amazing for taking these little feet off of the uh, off of the base. It's not necessary, but it really does give a uh, give an advantage on it. You can do the same thing with a flathead. Just take your time and be careful. But this little trick here, you can do the exact same thing if you have some Ziploc bags around. If you've got some of the bigger Ziplocs. I didn't. Uh, something I like doing is I just take the gloves that I wear. I wear a 2x glove, and I slide it over the motor on either side. This keeps the actual motor itself uh, from getting any debris or anything inside of it. it. Keeps it sealed up. You don't have to worry about anything getting into it. The motor is the heartbeat of everything. So the cleaner it stays, the better. All right, so here we're starting the painting process. You don't want to get a lot of buildup on the inside part of this. The more buildup you get on the inside part, uh, the harder it's going to be to get the uh, get that KitchenAid uh, band around it. Now, what I'm sanding with here is actually 400 grit. This is on the DynaBrave 3 inch uh, mini DA that they have. Uh, I personally like to go through after I sand with 400, uh, go through with a red Scotch Bright. Uh, any of you who are DIY folks, you don't have to go through and machine sand these. Uh, you can hand sand them with 400. 
Uh, if you're going to go and just do a basic paint job, you can go through and lay down a, uh, a sealer. I personally like to use an epoxy just, uh, just as cheap insurance and then go straight to base and clear after letting it dry. Uh, for me, I put the epoxy down and then I spray the metal flake. Now the metal flake here is a custom mix from Tropical Blitz. It's a combo of their coarse and super coarse flake, all buried in clear. And then I go back and I sand it all down with 600 and then I start the candy process. All right, so here you see going in and doing the candy. Uh, this candy color is a mix as well from, uh, from Sim Products using their candy concentrates. Uh, I used a couple of different colors uh, to get this purple shade. I'm trying to get away, trying to get it away from being as purpley red uh, as what my sister-in-law wanted. Uh, tried to get it just a little bit, you know, more blue on, on the on the side of this thing. So nice to going in doing some clear coat on it. And of course, everything for reassembly is the exact opposite of how you took it apart. Just take your time with it. Make sure that everything is operational and working like it should before you move on to the next step. Uh, trust me, it'll save you the time. Right, now here you see me taking the motor apart. Now this has been sitting about a week, uh, as you can see. Uh, it's still nice and clean, no, no issues, no nothing. Now again, to put the motor back in, you've got to take the head part off that where the gears and grease and all is uh, because you need to have access there. Now, just a quick note for you guys. Uh, if you've never taken these apart and you don't know how to adjust them, uh, you can hold, once you set the motor in place, you obviously want to make sure that the gears are you know all aligned. You can hold it in place and turn the planetary up underneath just to, uh, just to get everything lined up and you'll feel it click into place and uh, be good to go from there. Put the top back on it and roll on. So here we've got the motherboard back in and we're going back through and making all of the connections. Now this is where I said it was very, very important to pay attention to how things are plugged in as well as where. Uh, you can actually have full power to a mixer on every single one of the settings. And uh, it's just because one connection is turned upside down and not how it should be. Ask me how I know. All right, we're just putting the head part back onto the mixer couple screws holding it in place. Put the last part in for the bowl lift itself. Now whenever you go to actually put the uh, what is it, the attachments, uh, the attachment cover right there, that little chrome flip cap, uh, all it is is just pressed in. So just align it, make everything uh, make everything straight and aligned like it should be, tap it in with a rubber mallet, it does amazing. Now, this part here takes a couple, uh, takes a little bit of time, takes a couple minutes. Uh, make sure you have that thing exactly like it should be. That KitchenAid trim band can scratch your fresh paint job very quickly and very easily if you don't pay attention. So take the time and uh, get it done, making sure it's lined up. Guys, that's about it. That's, uh, that's wrapping it up. Thank you for checking this video out. Uh, give us a subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, check us out for more.